Enter. Enter. Sorry I'm late. The traffic in Freiburg at this time of year would try the patience of a saint. Uh, don't worry, Father. It appears I haven't died yet. It's very dark in here. Shall I draw the curtains? It's a lovely winter afternoon out there. No. Thank you. At least let me open the window. It's terribly stuffy. If you want me to catch my death of cold, if you're hot, take off your jacket. <laughs> told it's been a while since your last confession. Uh, straight to business. I like that. And you don't have much time. You don't want it wasted. If you have sinned and seek forgiveness, I'm ready to take confession. Oh, I've sinned all right. Bless me, Father, for I have sinned. I haven't been to confession since, oh, well, for years. I was a bad-tempered and uncaring employer, an uninterested father, a deceitful and unloving husband. I repeatedly engaged in sex outside marriage. During the war, I was an SS guard at Birkenau. For these and all my sins, I am truly sorry. Birkenau? Ah, that got your attention, didn't it? Do you want to hear about the camps? Go read a book. I've got nothing to add. Except one thing. I did one good and selfless thing in my life. And I did it at Birkenau. I supervised a squad of Zonderkommando who would don gas masks and enter the chambers as the Zyklon B was clearing retrieve the corpses. How many people did you kill? Personally? None. On that score, my conscience is clear. We could process 700 individuals at a time. Tell someone get a tally, I'm sure. I didn't. It wasn't my job. Just following orders? I make no apology for that. We were a well-oiled machine. A machine of death? Of murder? Those People would have died anyway. Far better to do it as efficiently and humanely as possible. There was nothing humane about the camps. Humane? Uh, maybe not. Human? Definitely. For there to be forgiveness, there first needs to be remorse and... I see precious little evidence of this. Amongst all this horror, you hinted at one redeeming act. Tell me about it. It was September 1944. A batch of prisoners from Hungary had been brought in. As always, Prisoners were escorted to the changing rooms by the undressed in preparation for showering and de-lousing. Once the chamber was sealed, the Zyklon B would be introduced. How long did it take? Twenty minutes until the screams and cries died away. Husbands trampling over their wives Mothers standing on top of their children. The Zonder Commando would have to untangle the jumbled pyramid of limbs and torsos. And this September morning was no different, except as the gas cleared, there was a girl.
I was about to finish off on the gas and I've been unable to accomplish. But looking into those dark, fathomless eyes, all my resolve fled. I smuggled her into the camp, concealed her in the rafters above the disrobing chamber. You risked your life for her? The one selfless thing I've ever done. Twice a day, I bought her food and drink. I even hatched a plan to smuggle her out of the camp. She declined. She said she'd sit the war out where she was. Towards the end, when things started to fall apart, she simply vanished. And then last month, I received a letter. It was written by someone who claimed to be the girl I saved all those years ago. What did it say? It had a proposal. I had saved her life in the war. Now she would spare mine. It's not within her gift. God alone can make that kind of an offer. Well, he hasn't put in an appearance, has he? You asked a lot of questions. I have one for you. People will do terrible things just to preserve their own lives. Can that be forgiven? Can God forgive anything and anyone for anything they do, no matter how craven, how cowardly, how bestial? Absolutely. I believe in a merciful God. He sees all. But if there is genuine remorse, he forgives all. Ah, that's all I wanted to know. Lean closer, Father. Closer. I don't believe in your God, but I do believe in the other fellow. I've met one of his daughters. I'm truly sorry. <laughs> <laughs>